Okay, first things first. After using this for about seven weeks, would I buy this bike light again? Uh, yeah. For $30, you would be hard pressed to find something more economical, yet so incredibly bright, but also fairly reliable. So how bright are they? Frickin' bright! How many lumens? Well, I don't know if it's actually the 1800 lumens that the Amazon seller claims, but I mean, it's really, really bright. So I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. Brightness. And modes. Here are the brightnesses of the four different modes. Here's mode one, which is the lowest of the three constant settings. Mode two is the middle mode. Mode three is the absolute brightest mode. It's like staring into the sun at noontime. I cannot condone staring into the sun during the day or into these at night. I'm pretty sure they would produce some pretty similar results with just permanent damage to your eyes. Don't do that. And mode four, which is strobe mode. And it's kind of a secret because it's nowhere to be found in the manual. As in, it mentions it, but not how to activate it. To activate strobe mode, you'll want to have it off and then hold down the power button for three seconds. Just like this. And now you'll probably have an epileptic seizure, so be warned, because it's seriously intense if you use it at night. Especially without any street lights. I usually switch over to constant mode when there's no street lights, so that I can actually see things. Okay, so here are the brightnesses of the four different modes, this time compared to a car's headlights. One. So what you kind of notice when you're looking towards the two light sources is that the tiny bike light is a pinpoint compared to the car's headlights. It doesn't necessarily matter if you are the one on the bike, but hopefully drivers and onlookers know not to look at it. And you will definitely be seen because it is so bright and so attention grabbing. The flashing light is actually pretty noticeable during the day as well. If you care to ride with it during the day, that is. I don't really use lights during the day, so this review is primarily based around night riding. Most of the routes that I take at night are speckled with street lights for the majority of the time. Because of that, I actually use the strobe mode the most for the majority of my rides because I feel like it really makes drivers know that you are a cyclist and not a motorbike or something faster. Now, when I see a dark area coming up and I know I'll need the extra light to avoid face planting into the road because of Canadian potholes, I switch over to mode one or two. I rarely use mode three just because it's so freaking bright. Battery life. It took a few days to test the battery life of each mode because I needed to fully charge and then drain the batteries each time. Here are the time lapses and times for each mode. Mode 1 is the weakest setting, Mode 2 is the middle setting, Mode 3 is the brightest setting, and Mode 4 is the strobe. Put simply, if you charge it up to 100%, it'll probably last you for most if not all your rides. Now for the critiques, but they're mostly just observations. Number one, it's been a few weeks now and I've found that if you leave the light connected to the battery at all, even if it's just overnight for around eight hours or so, you'll find that it'll most likely be dead the next time you go to try to use it. So I leave it disconnected when I'm not using it. It's not that big of a problem if you are aware of it. It is a big problem if you are not aware of it. So now you know about it. Number two, when the light's strapped to the handlebars, it will inevitably get pulled further and further back, so it keeps on pointing further and further up, becoming quite the opposite of useful, rather quickly. Actually, it gets pretty dangerous when it's just pointing directly at your face if you knock it fully backwards and it's just shining bright light on your face in the night. Oh god. My solution has been to leave an elastic band on my handlebars and make it so it holds the light forward no matter what. And no, it doesn't impact the amount of light getting to the road at all. And if it does, it's negligible anyway. Number three. The charger is pretty bare bones. Not only is there no fancy voltage or percentage readout, which is kind of expected at this price range, but the biggest problem with the charger is that you don't actually know when it's fully charged or not. Its threshold, green light means charge, is seemingly anything above 50%. I just have to leave it plugged in for as many hours as I can before going on a ride. Number four, I've been waiting to do this since I got the light, but the actual unit itself is super sharp along the edges and the vertices. 
I'm going to grind down the edges so it's less bloody sharp. It's designed like a CPU heat sink so that there's the most amount of surface area possible in order to get the heat to dissipate as fast as possible, but they forgot that this is in front of your face while you're riding on a two-wheeled contraption, potentially at night, going over bumps and you might crash or something. So this isn't safe. Ah uh, yeah, okay, this is more like it. Unfortunately, well, the resale value is now zero dollars. That also means that thieves won't want to steal this, which is perfect, totally my style. Conclusion. Like I said at the top, I would buy this bike light again. I'd also recommend it because, I mean, now you've seen me test and review it, so you know what you'll be getting. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little review and I hope it helped shed some light on this light. I know when I was deciding which light to get, I just watched a bunch of YouTube videos and I looked through way too many Amazon reviews. So hopefully this will make your decision a little bit easier. See you in the next video. And as per usual, if you know anyone that this video could help, pass it along. And please consider subscribing for more videos like this. And if you liked this video, tap the like button. Out, bye.